and there are differences. So let me give you a couple examples and then we'll do some definitions and then I'll give you some strategies for telling the difference. So if you read The Onion, do you read The Onion? It's an online news source. It calls itself America's finest news source. And last week it had a story called Man Spends Day Dreading Fun Activity He Signed Up For. That sounds pretty silly. If you go look at the article online, the article is sillier than the headline is. It's pretty clear that it's made up. But if you look carefully at The Onion, you'll see some political articles. And did you know that in the last 10 years, the Chinese government, the Iranian government, some United States elected politicians, and some very fine news sources in the United States have actually been fooled by Onion articles and thought they were real. So does that go in the fake news category or not? Let's think about it for a minute. Here's another example. Last fall, a, an article appeared in an online newspaper with a photograph of a warehouse in Ohio with lots of ballot boxes. And um, the ballot boxes were filled with ballots marked for Hillary Clinton. This was before the election. And the reporter reported this as evidence of massive voter fraud. Turns out the reporter was a recent college graduate who invented the story, found the photograph, inserted it in the story, and sold it to a newspaper. So is that fake news or not? Well, let's use a definition and then you can decide. Most people define fake news as an information disguised as news with facts that have been invented and which can be debunked. So you can actually disprove the facts that are in a fake news story. But its intent is to persuade you, so it's actually sold as news. So now think back to that Onion story. The site for The Onion makes it pretty clear that what they do is entertainment and satire. Right? They don't pretend to be a news source, so it doesn't really count. How about the newspaper story about the warehouse in Ohio? That's a more interesting one. So the writer of that story admitted he made it up, and he made it up to make money, but also to persuade people. So that's probably pretty closer to fake news. So what can you do to try to identify fake news when you see it? Here are some strategies. First know your source. If you see one of those articles in your Facebook feed, my recommendation is click on it, go look at the source, read the about page. Who is it? Can you tell? Who writes for it? Can you tell? What's the URL, the web address? Does it look real? Step number two, triangulate. That means look for the story someplace else. Can you find the same story someplace else? Is it a developing news story? That means some information might be accurate one time and a few hours later might be less accurate. Right? Look at the photographs. You know how easy it is to manipulate photographs. Maybe you even know how to do that. So use a Google reverse image search. There is such a thing and if you don't know how to do it, yes, you can Google it and look for that image in other places. Right? See if you can find the same image in other places that you can compare. Know what you're looking at. Do you know the difference between a news article, an analysis article, an op-ed, or an advertisement? Take a look at BuzzFeed online. It's a great news source, but it's also got a lot of other interesting articles that you can find, including those funky quizzes that we take all the time, like how to tell what country you should live in. So some of the information is really legitimate news, and some of it isn't, and you need to learn to tell the difference. Make sure you recognize your own biases. We all tend to want to believe information that conforms to what we already believe. So if you have political viewpoints and you see information that agrees with your viewpoints, be a little suspicious. Make sure you look for other information that will confirm it. And finally, there are actually really good fact checker sites out there. So Snopes.com, if you don't know about it, and factchecker.org. PolitiFact.com is a great one. It has a truthometer and um, it'll tell you if something is mostly true or mostly fa false. And the Washington Post has a fact checker. His name is Glenn Kessler, and he awards Pinocchios from one to four, depending on how accurate a news story is. So now you have some tools. You have some ways to look differently at your Facebook feed and your other news sources, and you can become a really good news literate citizen.